Hi everybody. This video is going to cover the um, topics of circle geometry that include an introduction to what it's all about, some information about circumference and arc length, radian measure, and the uh, area of circles and sectors of circles. So let's go ahead and begin with a brief introduction to circle geometry. With circles, there are certain vocabulary words that involve the circumference of a circle. And um, what we're going to go over on this slide is just the difference between a major and minor arc, as well as what a semicircle and a central angle are. Um, a minor arc. That is an arc that has measurement that is less than 180 degrees. So in this picture right here, we have um, th three, at least three minor arcs that we could name. Um, arc FE right there is a minor arc, ED, DC, and CB. Again, a minor arc is an arc that has a measurement that is less than 180 degrees. That is a minor arc. Uh, a semicircle, that is an arc that is going to have exactly 180 degrees. So arc FEC is a semicircle because the diameter is right there, FC being the diameter. Um, FDC is also another way to name that semicircle. This is a good point to um, mention. A minor arc is only going to use two letters to identify it. FE is just a two-letter arc that you, can, um, that you can name right there. A semicircle, you have to use three letters to describe a, uh, a semicircle. So that's why FEC, there is the E, or um, FDC could be um, the ways to name those semicircles. Also, CBF would be the semicircle that is on the other side of the circle. A major arc, that is an arc that is greater than 180 degrees. So ECF is an example of a major arc. It is greater than 180 degrees. Notice, three letters have to be used to name a major arc. You just start at the first letter, which in this case was E, and then you go in the direction of the second letter, which was C. And then you end at the third letter, which was F. So ECF would be that major arc. Another major arc. BDF and CFD. BDF goes around in that direction and CFD, whoops, wrong way, is right there. A major arc is greater than 180 degrees. A minor arc is less than 180 degrees. A major arc has to be named with three letters. A minor arc has to be named with two letters. Lastly, a central angle. Very common, very basic idea. You simply take the center of the circle as the vertex of your angle. So in this case, the center of the circle is A. So angle F a, B is a central angle because, again, the vertex A is the center of the circle. Another example of a central angle could be angle D, A, B, right there. All right, let's move on. Just some practice problems to uh, test your understanding of this material. I would recommend that if you pause the video and try to answer the questions over here, that would allow you to get a little bit of practice. And, and then once you hit resume, I will explain how to work out the problems. All right, so uh, the measure of angle A 145 degrees, we would get that because 35 and angle B, they are opposite from each other. They are vertical angles. So that means angle B is also 35 degrees. And since the entire circle's diameter is 180 degrees of measurement, if you were to measure it, simply do 180 minus 35, and you would get 145 degrees for the measure of angle A. 
Angle B is 35 degrees, as I just said from calculating um, that, that these are opposite angles. Or the 35 and the B are opposite angles, and they are also called vertical angles, so they have the same measurement. Angle C is 45 degrees because if you know angle B is 35 degrees, and then we know the entire circle's diameter is 180 degrees of arc measurement, then simply do 180 minus 100 minus 35, and, uh, and then you're left with 45 degrees for, uh, for that answer. GH, arc GH, um, the measure of the arc is always the same as the included angle in degrees, so arc GH also has a measurement of 35 degrees. GIJ, that means starting at G and going in the direction of I and ending at J, um, that is a semicircle, so it is 180 degrees of measurement. KI means you start at K, you end at I, and because we already know that B is 35 degrees and we already know that C is 45 degrees, simply add those together and you will get KI as 80 degrees of measurement. And then lastly, GKI. That means you start at G, you go in the direction of K, and you stop at I. That is a total of 225 degrees of measurement. You could simply take 360 degrees, which is, of course, the entire circle. And since you know those two measurements are 35 and 100 added together, 135 degrees, simply subtract these two angles from the entire circle, and you will be left with your answer for the measurement of arc GKI, which is 225 degrees. And let's go ahead and move on. All right, here is a, um, a good little word problem that just kind of applies this concept to a real world situation. Again, if you pause the video and try to work it out and then hit resume, you will hear the explanation. So, five streets come together at a traffic circle as shown below. The diameter of the circle traveled by a car is 200 feet. If traffic travels counterclockwise, what is the approximate distance from East Street to Nepon Street? Well, the first thing to observe is that right here in the problem, we have a 40 degree of measurement symbol, and it is showing you the distance of the arc right here. I know that's kind of hard to see. Let me actually just change uh, to a color that's going to stand out a bit more. Let's make that black. Um, right here is a 40 degree marker showing you 40 degrees of measurement. Since we are told... Uh, to find the distance from East Street to Nippon Street, we, uh, we know that we have a diameter right here of 200 feet, as it's said in the problem. So if we have a diameter, then that means the entire measure of that diameter would be 180 degrees. If we already know that 40 degrees of measurement is represented right there in yellow, then all we have to do is take 180 and subtract 40 from it, and then the blue arc 140 degrees, that is the distance around the circle from East Street to Nepon Street. And that is the length around the circle that we are trying to figure out right now that, uh, that we'll go ahead and do. So, um, the first thing is we got to find the circumference of the entire traffic circle. The way you can do that 2 pi r or pi times the diameter are the two formulas for the circumference of a circle. Since we are told that 200 is the um, diameter of the circle, we can go ahead and use pi times the diameter to find the total circumference. Uh, the diameter was 200, so 200 pi would be the circumference of the entire circle. Now, this is a very important part of the problem. Since 200 pi is the diameter of the entire circle, we need to only find 
the blue arc that is represented by 140 degrees. Since we only need that fractional part of the circle's circumference calculated, again, we only need this distance that I'm highlighting again, that's 140 degrees, um, we only need that part of the circumference. The entire circle is 360 degrees of measurement. We only need 140 of those degrees. So that means we can set up the fraction 140 out of 360 because out of the entire circle, we only need 140 degrees of the circumference. So that is the fraction that we would multiply the entire circumference by. If we needed the entire circumference, we would have been done. It would have been 200 pi. But we only wanted the distance from East Street to Nepon Street. And that angular distance that's traveled was 140 degrees, which is some fractional part of the entire circumference. And the way you would figure that out is simply multiply your fraction, 140 over 360, by 200 pi. And the rest is just algebra. 140 over 360 can reduce to 7 over 18. Multiply that by 200, you get, 100 and, oh, you get 1400 pi over 18. Simplify that to 700 pi over 9. And of course, at the beginning of the problem, you could have just taken out a calculator and um, divided 140 by 360 and you would have gotten a long decimal, multiplied that by 200, multiplied that by 3.14, and you would get an approximate answer of 244.2 feet of distance. So uh, just to review that main point, here are three circles where the only thing you have to find is the length of each arc shown in red, and you are to leave your answers in terms of pi, meaning don't use 3.14, just leave your answer as whatever number it is with the pi symbol next to it. And again, pause the video, work out the problems, hit resume when you're ready. Okay, number two. We uh, have a 60 degree symbol right there. If the entire semicircle is 180 degrees of measurement, then all we have to do is take 180 and subtract 60, and we are left with 120, which is the red arc that is represented right here. I should probably do that in red if we're going to talk about the arc being red. There we go. So uh, the fractional part of the circumference that we're looking for is 120 degrees out of 360 degrees, and we would multiply that by the circumference. The uh, circumference would be 24 pi because pi times the diameter, and the diameter was 24. So 24 pi is the diameter of your uh, circle right here, or 24 pi is the circumference of the circle. And when we multiply that by 120 over 360, and you simplify and reduce your fractions and everything, you get 8 pi. This video is focusing on circle geometry and not necessarily the algebra skills of simplifying and reducing fractions. Number three, we have a semicircle pictured here. The semicircle is 180 degrees of measurement divided by 360. That is basically half of the circle that we are looking for right here. Whoops. Let me just... Uh, Fix this. There we go. Um, and then the uh, diameter is 23. 23 pi would be the circumference. So 180 pi, or 180 over 360 um, times 23 pi gives you uh, 23 pi over 2, or 11.5 pi, when you reduce everything. Basically, 180 over 360, that is just half reduces to one half. So you're taking half of the circumference, which was uh, 23 pi. So 23 pi over 2 or 11.5 pi. And then uh, number four, 
we have um, vertical angles right here. If this is 25 degrees, then that is also a 25 degree arc because they are across from one another. Vertical angles are always equal to each other. And uh, 25 over 360 is going to be the part of the circle circumference that you're looking for. And then because the 9 is just written on this part of the, um, the diameter, that means it's a radius. 9 is only half of the entire diameter. So we would need to use the circumference formula 2 pi r. And r is 9, so um, 2 times 9 would be 18, so you would have 18 pi, and um, multiplying 18 pi by 25, and then dividing by 360, all of that reduces to 5 fourths pi. Uh, this next example is um, is a really good one to test your understanding of this material. Um, again, pause the video, read through it, and then I'll play through the work kind of quickly. But you're basically finding the length of a wrought iron that is in this entire arch picture right there. Go ahead and pause the video and uh, resume when you're ready. Okay, so um, we're trying to find the total length of wrought iron in this picture, and um, there are three stages to this problem. The first thing is to understand that the diameter is 20 feet across, so we would need to use pi times the diameter to first find the, um, the circumference of just this orange part of the arc. Since the arc is a semicircle, we are only taking half of its circumference. So one half, and then 20 was the diameter, times pi gives you the circumference, but it's half of that, so 10 pi is going to be the circumference of the orange arch that is, uh, that is pictured right there. The blue arch. We also have to find that circumference, and again, it is a semicircle. But what's its diameter? Well, the problem tells us that there are nine segments of um, wrought iron connecting the two concentric circles, and each segment is three feet long. That means if you have three feet of length on each side of the arch, well then that means you are adding 3 feet to the original diameter of 20. And if you add 3 feet on each side of 20, you are left with 26 feet as the uh, diameter of the blue arch in the picture right now, 26 feet. To find that circumference, um, 26 times pi would be the overall circumference, but again, we have a semicircle, so it is just half of 26 pi um, for that circumference, which is 13 pi. One last thing to do, we have nine pieces of wrought iron. Each of those nine pieces are three feet long. And... Those are part of the calculation as well, so we need to take those nine pieces of wrought iron, multiply by three, and then nine times three is 27. We now have the last bit of uh, wrought iron that is represented in this picture. In orange, the inner concentric circle was 10 pi. You can see that right there. In blue, the outer concentric circle was 13 pi, and then the nine pieces of yellow wrought iron that you see in the middle, that was 27 um, feet of wrought iron. If you add all of those together and round to the nearest foot, you are going to get, oh, whoopsie daisy, uh, you are going to get 99 feet. And there it is again. Uh, a brief little discussion on um, radians. Uh, this is a really big, big concept, but just to kind of give the, um, the, the main concept of what a radian is, we have degrees of measurement. We have radians that is also used to measure um, uh, distance around a circle or, or angular measurement around a circle. The basic idea with a radian is this. If you have a circle, any circle, it is going to have a radius, and let's call that radius r, like it's pictured right here. 
all radii in a circle are equal. So if I have a radius drawn right here in the yellow highlighter, and we also have a, um, a radius drawn right here in blue, those two radii have the same measurement. They are from the same circle. They are both a radius of that circle. One radian, so, so a, the, the measurement of a radian is when you take the same distance that you just went um, for, uh, for both of the radii, if you traveled that same distance along the circumference of a circle, that distance, that angular measurement is considered to be one radian. And you can see it right there in blue. So again, when you take, we have it in yellow right there, one radius highlighted in yellow. All circles have um, the same radius because all circles are similar. So the blue radius is now highlighted there. One radian is that same radius distance, that same measurement, but you're traveling around the circumference of the circle. So it's highlighted there in orange. What you see highlighted in orange is one radian. And it comes out to be roughly, um, I, be I believe it's uh, 50, 52 degrees or 57 degrees. It's close to that. You don't exactly need to know the degree of measurement. It's just there is a way to convert it into degrees, and that is what you need to be able to do um, just for the sake of, of, of this video. Um, the basic conversions of radians right here are the main ones to just know. Uh, you know, a circle's rotation is 360 degrees. Therefore, uh, one full rotation around a circle is 2 pi radians. So 2 pi radians equals 360. Now, what this boils down to, and maybe in another video this would be explained more, to convert a measurement of degrees into radians, you simply multiply by the factor 2 pi over 360. Or if you wanted to reduce that all the way to pi over 180, it is the exact same thing. I'm just choosing to use 2 pi over 360 because it ties into the conversion that is pictured right there. Likewise, to go from radians back into degrees of measurement, you would use the inverse factor of um, 360 over 2 pi. But um, what we're going to do on the next slide is just practice that right there, going from degrees into radians. Convert each measure um, into radians. We have 45 degrees. Pause the video if you like and then hit resume when you're ready. 45 will first need to be multiplied by 2 pi over 360 in order to convert it into radians. 45 times 2 is 90, and then 90 pi over 360. Um, 90 divides into 360 four times, leaving you with pi over 4. 100 is going to be multiplied by 2 pi over 360, and 100 times 2 pi is 200 pi, and all of that is over 360. Again, reduce it all the way, you get 5 ninths pi. And then lastly, 90 degrees times 2 pi um, over 360 is going to give you 180 pi over 360. 180 divided by 360, that is going to leave you with pi over 2. All right. Uh, one last thing to look at, the area of circles and sectors. This is just a quick review of the area formula. Um, a school is planting a circular garden. If the diameter of the garden is six feet, what is the garden's area to the nearest tenth of a square foot? You need to remember that when you are finding the area of a circle, that is pi times the radius squared. If the diameter is six feet, that means we will cut the diameter in half and get three feet for the radius. So that means the area of this entire garden is three squared times pi, and three squared is nine, so nine pi would be the area of the entire circle. Um, but to put that to the nearest tenth, that would be uh, 28.3 square feet. 
Number two, uh, a dog is on a leash attached to a pole in the ground. The leash is eight feet long. How much area can the dog move around, round to the nearest tenth? Um, just to kind of help you understand uh, what's going on here, here's a little picture of a dog on a leash, and the leash is going to be eight feet long. Oh, there we go. Um, and if the leash is eight feet long, that is representing the radius. So the dog has an eight foot radius circle to run around and play in. That means pi times eight squared will give us the area, and that is 64 pi. And if you take 64 pi and uh, multiply 64 by 3.14 and round to the nearest tenth, you get 200.96, which rounds up to 201. All right, the last set of questions right here, uh, finding the area of each shaded sector of the circle. This is very similar to finding part of the circumference where we're going to be doing um, a little bit of fraction multiplication again, and we are going to be leaving our answer in terms of pi. So uh, one last time, pause the video, work these problems out, and hit resume when you are ready. Okay, um, the first circle... Remember that the area is pi times the radius squared. The radius of this first circle is 10, so the area is um, 10 squared times pi, which is 100 pi. The shaded part of this circle, remember, we're just finding the shaded sector, and the shaded sector is only 45 degrees of measurement. That means 45 degrees out of the entire 360 degrees is the part of the circle we're trying to find the area of. So 45 out of 360, that reduces to the fraction 1 eighth. So basically, we're going to take 100 pi and multiply that by 1 eighth and get 100 pi over 8, but when you reduce that as far as you can, you get 25 pi over 2, or 12 and a half pi. Oops. Let me just fix that little typo right there. There we go. All right, the next question. Um, notice how the shaded area... Oops. Notice how the shaded area is much larger this time. Um, we are going to start off by still finding the area. Um, the circle's radius is 6, so 6 squared is 36. 36 pi is the area of the entire circle. Um, notice, though, the shaded region is, uh, is just... Everything that is not this 60 degrees of measurement. We don't want to include 60 degrees right there. Oh, I think I have a little typo on the slide. Let me just fix that. Uh, 360 degrees is the entire circle's um, angular measurement, and we don't want that 60 degree part of it. So, 360 minus 60 is going to leave us with 300. So, 300 out of 360, that is the degree of measurement that we want um, to create our uh, fraction of the entire circle's area. Um, 300 over 360 reduces to 5 sixths. That will multiply 36 pi. Um, again, I'm assuming we can handle our algebra skills. Um, the denominator of 6 divides into 36 six times, leaving you with 6 pi times 5, and then 6 pi times 5 is 30 pi. There are other ways of simplifying this problem to get the answer, but the main idea, 5 6 pi is the fraction part of the area that you are looking for, and 36 pi was the entire area of the circle. So you would just multiply 36 pi times 5 6. Last question. Uh, you will notice that we um, have a diameter of 24, so we would first need to cut that in half and make it 12 so that the radius is 12. The uh, area would therefore be 144 pi because 12 squared is 144. And then our shaded area is divided into two parts. We have a 120 degree sector 
right there. But then above it, we have a semicircle. A semicircle is 180 degrees of angular measurement. So we are basically taking a 120 degree arc and adding a semicircle to it, giving us a total of 300 degrees of measurement. We already know from the previous problem that 300 degrees out of 360 is just 5 sixths. So we can just go ahead and multiply 5 sixths by 144 pi. And when you reduce your fraction and you multiply and simplify and all of that, you're going to be left with 120 pi. All right, well, thank you for watching this video. I hope this addressed those uh, topics related to circle geometry, and uh, I will see you next time.